Hello and welcome to Marriage Investment. And we want to say Happy, Happy Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. This is episode one, and we thank all of you and our beauty viewing audience for joining us. So tell us about Marriage Investment. Well, Marriage Investment is basically married couples having a dialogue. And also having a conversation. A discussion. A consultation. A debate. Hmm. A conference on uh, light, medium, and heavy topics. Hmm. The purpose is to encourage, enrich, and enlighten you, our viewers. So there are going to be some surprises eventually in other episodes. We'll have some twists and other things. Be very interactive, but that's coming later. Uh, for today, uh, the topics from Marriage Investment is from a game that we created, and we'll tell you more about that later. Created about um, 20 years ago. Yeah, it's been a while. And we're honored today to have some marriage investment partners. Absolutely uh, astounding, yes. wonderful partners. <laughs> Joining us today are Ronald and Angela Scott. Hello. Hey, how y'all doing? How everybody's doing this great day? Thank you so much for inviting us. We're excited about this. We are the Scots. Yes. Scottish royalty. Yes. <laughs> We've been married. It'll be 24, 24 years, years on, on Valentine's, Valentine's Day. day. Oh. oh my God. <laughs> Yes. And we're in the state, the great state of North Carolina. That's right. Okay, amen, amen, amen. Hello, everybody. All right. And um, we have Zach and Sarah Terrell. Hi. Hi. We are Zach and Sarah Terrell, and we are from Kansas, and we will be married 19 years this year. Congratulations. Oh, congratulations. Whoop, whoop. And also we have... They may be giving them away where they're from, but we're going to say the basics. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Day, everyone. So, yeah, we are um, from the great state of Missouri. Can't see Chief Go Chief! Go Chief! Go Chief. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but where are you living right now, though? <laughs> we are living in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. And, um... My wife and I have been married uh, 28 years. Ooh, all right, all right, all right. Woo, woo. Uh, much in part to marriage investment. <laughs> awesome. That is, that is great news. I just wanted to let the audience know, you know, there's nothing wrong with them wearing Kansas City. Uh, we did look, oh, yeah, yeah. y'all. We're William and Diane Adams. And how long have we been married? 37 Years? No, it hasn't been 37. Oh, 35. <laughs> 35. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Thing into it. She, she spoke to where we're going. That's right. 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 Okay. I ain't mad with you. That's right. Uh, 35 years and uh, six months. Uh, so we've been together for a while, and uh, we really, I like to tell people that I'm joyfully married. Um, and actually, this probably sounds a little crazy. And I've been doing this for a few years now. When I fill out my application and ask Mary, I not only check the box, but I write the word joyfully in there. <laughs> but, you know, I've been employed, you know, if that, you know, I just like to let people know I'm married, but the joy goes with it. Uh, at least that's, you know, been our testimony. Amen. Jesus. Now let's hear from our couples on some items that they have chosen to dialogue or converse. I don't think we have debates today, but, you know, yeah, you can have good debates. So we're going to randomly select uh, so our audience will get to hear from our couple. So I think uh, my wife is taken. And who's going to be the first couple? Yeah. The Tarot's are going so. to go. So <laughs> we're going to let them. And then we're going to put you in here and we'll do another random. Uh, notice the nice uh, Valentine's cup, a mug. So we're going to hear from them. Okay, well, you, you talk first. Okay, well, um, I would like to talk about recounting some ways that my spouse has been really supportive um, because 
we've been through a lot um, in the 19 years that we've been married, including um, a brain tumor. I had a brain tumor. And um, so that was one of the ways in which um, God really used Zach uh, to save my life, really. Um, I was very, very sick. And then after they removed my brain tumor, I was even more sick for a very long time. And uh, also just in a really dark place emotionally because of all of the things that were going on spiritually, just struggling. Um, and my husband would do things like, um, one thing that really sticks out to me is that he disallowed me from ever doing any laundry. He said, if I come home from work and I find out that you've been doing the laundry, <laughs> I am not going to be happy. And he <laughs> took over all the laundry we had at the time. We had four small children, um, seven and, and younger, with our youngest being two. And I couldn't, I couldn't pick up our two-year-old. I couldn't do anything really. And wow. um, he organized people to come to the house and stay with me when he was at work and just way above and beyond, not only just the physical support, but also just the love and just the encouragement, the prayers, the amount of prayers that this man has prayed for me, the amount of times that he's fasted for me um, and just stood in the gap for me has been unbelievably amazing. So... <laughs> okay, I am, uh, uh, my topic is comment on this statement. The great thing be about being married a long time is growing in love with the same person again and again and again. And, uh, you know, I, I do love that statement um, mm -hmm. because it's something that comes up a lot for me because we got married very early. We got married, uh, we were young, we were just out of high school, and um, a lot of times when I talk to people about about that and they hear that we got married right after I turned 18 and everything, first of all, they assumed that it was some kind of an emergency. <laughs> it wasn't, except for that I emergently needed to marry her. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but, but it wasn't anything like that, but people kind of always say to me, you know, I'm just not the same person that I was when I was 18 years old. And I just don't think that that would have been a good commitment for me because, you know, the person that I am now is just very different. And I don't know that we would still be in love if I had made that kind of a decision. But for me, uh, that's been one of the greatest things about marriage is that, you know, I'm not the same person that I was when we got married. Um, you know, 19 years ago, I was a completely different person, but the person that I am today loves the person that she is today oh. more than those two people love each other. And so I know that in another 20 years and another 30 years, 50 years of the Lord Terry's, you know, the people that will become will love the people that we become even more. <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of the joy is that you get to become together. You know, oh. uh, so that's that's uh, I think it's wonderful. I think that it's uh, beautiful that marriage provides the context that you can become whoever God is making you into and you don't have to. And that's the whole point of the commitment. You don't have to worry about I'm not going to love her then. No, we've made that decision. And uh, and so we can enjoy the the fruit of that commitment rather than having to worry about it. Wow. That is really That's wonderful. Awesome. That's awesome. Wonderful. Yeah. If you will That's hold on the cup. Beautiful. Yeah, we want to see what she's drawing names out of. Okay. To see um, what couple um, okay. uh, will be next. Aha. Aha. So to make sure, you know, that does say bases. So <laughs> <laughs> the bases are going to dialogue or discuss next. I'm going to choose um, being married a long time and uh, falling in love uh, over and over again. Um, meeting this uh, lady here was uh, a, more of a blessing to me than I could have imagined. Uh, you know, when I first saw her, it was lust. And, uh, and I can grew. identify. <laughs> it, it grew over the years uh, we have six uh, children and, and nine grandchildren but um, we had to uh, well I'm not going to speak for her I had to learn how to um, evolve 
and 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 love her and, and continue to meet those needs that she was giving forth that uh because they changed over the years and when you have children and, and grandchildren you, you tend to take your spouse for granted for granted from time to time and um I had to start uh, just listening more and uh, appreciating uh, what she brought to the table and what she brings to my life. And uh, I looked up um, investment, and it's so um, ironic that you all was inspired to choose marriage investment. And I came up with this definition. An investment is an asset or item that is purchased with the hope that it will generate income or appreciate in value mm. at some point in the future. And she has appreciated in value so much that I can't even afford it. But I thank <laughs> God that he, has, uh, that he has allowed me to uh, be alive. <laughs> it's, um, I was just moment. Wait, 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 let me just okay, think about that okay. a minute. It's like the fine wine thing, you know. Yes, <laughs> yes. Better. Okay. So um, I, I wanted to um, respond to the question that was recount some ways my spouse has been really supportive. And um, I can say that in the 28 years that we've been married, I, I'll probably switch jobs 28 times. <laughs> <laughs> and I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up, okay? <laughs> so I've always had, I've always been one to, um, you know, want to be my own boss and, and get off on tangents and do different things. I, I own like three different home-based businesses. And, you know, he has always been right behind me, supporting me in whatever that adventure was. You know, he's always been my biggest cheerleader. He's always, um, you know, supported me in not only uh, mentally, but, but emotionally, especially um, emotionally as spiritually. He's, he's uh, supported me, you know, I, going through all the pregnancies. You go from fat to skinny to fat to skinny, you know. <laughs> And the military, I've, we've moved, we've moved at, at least five times from state to state, you know, and, and in the military, when you move, they give you these boxes and they put these, these, the, the same color uh, sticker on the boxes to relate and show that they all belong to you. Well, I've got boxes of clothes that stayed in the box and they got like four different color stickers on them <laughs> because I'm going to someday get back in that size, you know, and, and he... And he doesn't say, you know, like, honey, why don't we give these to a worthy cause or anything? You know, he supports me when I'm sitting in there um, eating a grapefruit and, and, <laughs> and being on my diet that, that I'm continuously on. But he also supports me when I'm, like, when I'm in here cooking and, you know, just just frying up everything I can find. He supports me in whatever mindset I'm in, whatever space I'm in. He's learned to dwell with me accordingly. You know, <laughs> he, knows me, so he knows to um, the word. to be there with me and to support me and supporting me. You know, loving me and supporting me uh, has made me love and support him in every way possible. Because I know that even if you know I had a hard day outside of my home when I come from. I have somebody that is there that supports me, you know, that supports um, my ideas or, and, you know, he's my sounding board and he's, he's so supportive in every way. He um, cooks dinner, he washes clothes, you know, he takes care of kids, <laughs> he does all kinds of stuff. And I just love him because, you know, that's one of my love languages It's acts of, acts of kindness, things that, you know, acting, and doing things, and that's supporting when, you know, when I'm tired, I'm laying in the bed, and we still got enough laundry to, to coat a small nation, and he just goes down there and, <laughs> <laughs> and wipes my clothes, you know, <laughs> that's supporting that's So, <laughs> I just love him for that. That is, uh, that's great. Uh, you know, uh, I'm, the, I'm the laundryer in our family, and have been, we met y'all years ago, 
Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, I got I got a little tip. I said, you know what? It's five of us <laughs> times, you know, five times seven is thirty-five. That's like thirty-five pair of something a week. <laughs> and um, so I started washing twice a week. Just keep it going. So I understand, you know, I, you know, I'm, 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 yeah. Because I would have them piled up like Mount Rushmore. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have the Scots, so we're gonna pull your name out anyway, just to let you know. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. There you yeah, go. Yeah. There you go. Yes, sir, sir. 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 We got you. Sir. All right. Uh, what we chose to talk about. I, recount what attracted you to each other. And uh, I'm gonna go first <laughs> because my wife was such an awesome storyteller. She's an author, writer, producer, all of that, right? So I'm gonna lay the baseline and let her bring in the funk. How about that? <laughs> all right. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I met my wife through her mother. Yes. Her mother was my homeroom teacher. And she said, Ronald, have you met my daughter? I'm like, ma'am, I didn't know you had a daughter, you know? <laughs> and so, uh, and, and, you know, she was just coming back to the school. A lot of other things were going on back in the days. But anyway, um, she introduced us. It didn't hurt that she had some real nice legs. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't never thought that part. Those legs, I, y'all can judge me, whatever. But those I'm not legs, judging you. Like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, yeah. those legs, those legs spoke to my heart. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it didn't matter to me that you were chilling at that point in time. The legs spoke to me, you know. But anyway, I just I like to have fun, so you know. But, uh, but yeah, her mother introduced us, and it was important because to know her mother, the character and the standard that she had in the community and the school system. For me, for her want to introduce me to her daughter, it was a wow moment for me. It, it was a wow moment for me, a humbling, humbling moment. And we went 20 years without seeing each other or hearing from each other or anything, even though we was on the same campus at college. And God brought us back together. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you ain't getting away this time. You know, <laughs> I'm going to let you have it from here. <laughs> I love me some Ronald Scott. Let me start with that. (laughs) And it is true. Mother introduced us. Uh, We dated in high school, and I'll fill in the blanks. Mm. We broke up in high school. Mm. And since he's given me the opportunity to tell the story, I'll tell the story. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) He was uh, in the top uh, 10% of our graduating class, and he was very, very popular. He was... um, one of these stars on our basketball team. And I was um, Mrs. Meyer's daughter. That's how I was known. I wasn't even known by my, my name. <laughs> and, uh, and I was a cheerleader. And so uh, my, my parents had um, very guided disciplinary um, um, lifestyles for us. And so where I had to be home at a certain time, you know, he didn't. And so we would go out to a movie or to go get ice cream or whatever. And I was like, well, what are you going to do afterwards? And he said, I'm going to the Royal Circle Hall. That was where people hung out. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I want to go. He said, no, I'm taking you home 10 minutes before you're supposed to be there. I'll tell you about it when when I see the next day. But he was very popular. And because my life was sheltered and I thank God for it, um, I don't at all complain about what my my parents did for me. Um, I couldn't handle it. I just couldn't handle You know, everybody was about run around, 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 around. And so, but but that's how it was. So we broke up in high school. I'll never forget, I'll never forget the day we broke up. Me either. (laughs) 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 But you won't forget me either. I remember I was in my room and I was crying. My mother heard me in there crying. And she came in there. She said, what's wrong, Angie? And I said, I broke up with Ronald. And she said, well, you're crying, Ronnie. It was like, God, you did. And she said, well, do you want me to call him and talk to him? I was like, no. I stopped crying. I was like, no, no, no. you're going to make matters worse. But we did. We went to the same college. We didn't have any contact. We are a blended family. He had been married before. 
And um, I have been married before. And God just did something so amazing. No one could ever convince me that our steps are not ordered of the Lord because we saw the evidence of it. But it was in um, 1996. Um, I was going through, 95, I was going through a divorce. And um, then 96, I made a decision to relocate from uh, the Washington, D.C. area to North Carolina. But before doing that, um, my parents had a camp that they ran every summer. And it was Grandma, OB, and Pop Pop camp. And all of our children and my brothers and their spouses' children, they all came down to my parents at the same time every year. And then one of my sister-in-laws, her nieces and nephews, and it was just a phenomenal thing. And but because I was going through a divorce, my parents were very stern with me in that they said, listen, we know your life is changing, but um, we want the children's life to stay the same as much as possible. So this mm. summer, they're still coming down and you just need to find something else to do. You're not going to be running <laughs> up and down the road coming to check on them or anything like that. And my father even said, you know, you can come midway and then when it's time to pick them up. And uh, just to speed it up, you know, I came one particular weekend and one of my friends that rode with me asked me a question that I believe set everything in motion. And she said, well, the Holy Spirit has set some things in motion before that. But she said, if you had an opportunity to see anybody from your past, is there anyone? She's from Pennsylvania. And I said, there's only one person I would be remotely interested in. And she said, who? And I said, Ronald Scott. She said, why? And I said, because my mom had introduced me to him in high school. And for my mom to introduce me to someone, it speaks volumes. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said, where is he now? I said, I don't know. I don't, you know, I know he's in the military. I don't know anything else um, about him. Well, when we got to my mm -hmm. parents, one of our daughters came running out, the oldest, asking for, um, or she me my yearbook. And she says, you had a boyfriend in high school because she was wanting one. <laughs> and she said, I know his name. His name is Ronald Scott. And he wrote you poems. Here's the poem. I'm looking at it in your yearbook. And he wrote me the most beautiful poem. I'll never forget it. Roses are red, violets are blue. I will forever and always love you. <laughs> How can you forget such a romantic poem? <laughs> so, so uh, make a long story short, I went to take then uh, our young son to get his hair cut, and my father told me where to take him, and um, the, rep, the, the barber was closed, but there was a restaurant across the street, and the restaurant across the street was owned by my neighbor's sister, uh, it was owned by Barbara Lee and her sister lived across the street from me in, in the Maryland area. And so I said, let's go in there. I said to my friend that was with me, let's go in here for a minute so I can say hello to her. And we went, walked across the street and there was a gentleman sitting there, an older gentleman sitting there. And I spoke to him and uh, he spoke back and I was like, God, what is his name? Don't you just, you know, when you think you know somebody and you can't think of their name, that name is like, I got to think of their name. So I was like, um, um, you know, I said to him, hi, how are you? And he said, I'm fine. I was like, God, I don't know his name. So this is on the way out. And then as we, I said, I was telling my friend, I recognize your face, but forgive me, I don't remember your name. He said, it's not a problem. <laughs> and so as we were going out the door, I said, I know who it is. And she said, who? I said, that's Ronald's dad. She said, are you kidding me? We talked about him on the ride down. Your daughter read the poem. No, that's not his dad. I said, I'm sure that's his dad. She said, you got to go back. Don't you like those kind of friends that kind of push you through something? <laughs> and so I went back and I said, excuse me, uh, sir, but do you know Ronald? He said, yes. I said, I'm Angela. And he said, I know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. And I said, okay, I just wanted to acknowledge that I knew who you were. And I said, how is he doing? He said, he happens to be doing fine. In fact, he happens to be home this weekend. Mm. And he's going to be found at his mother's house. And I said, tell him, I said, hello. And he said, okay. And then he said, and he's given me a wonderful, wonderful uh, son. Now, I thought his son was a baby. So uh, Janice said, what are you going to do? You're going to call his mother? And I was like, no. 
we get to my mom's and she said, she explains to my mom what happened. My mother said, I wouldn't call either if my motives were not pure. I'm like, I've got pure motives. <laughs> <laughs> so I called. And when I called, uh, this young man answered the phone and it was a deep voice. And it said, hello. And I was like, hi, I'm calling to speak with Ronald. He said, hold on. And he was like, dad. I'm like, dad, no wonder we broke up. See, that's why we broke up. Because he sounded like he was like 20-some years old. <laughs> he was only 11 and a half. <laughs> and he comes to the phone. And he says, I said, hello. And he says, oh, wow. And I said, how are you doing? He said, I don't believe it. And I said, you don't believe what? He said, I don't believe it's you. And I said, your dad told you that he saw me. He said, I haven't even seen my dad because his parents never married. And I said, then you don't know who this is because, you know, ladies can relate. You don't want any man calling some other woman's name. And we hadn't seen each other in 20 years. And he said, no, I know who this is. And uh, he said, it's Angie. Angie Myers, and I said, how did you know it was me? After 20 years, we never talked. And he said, you're not gonna believe this, but last night, my mom asked me about you. And she asked me if I knew where you were, what you were doing, and we talked about you for over two hours. Wow. And I told her, they were just reminiscing, he said, and I told her, um, I didn't know where you were or what you were doing. And uh, so then he puts me on hold. And he says, uh, hold on. He comes back to the phone. He said, I'm sorry. Um, that was my, <laughs> my son's mother. And I said, oh, congratulations. Your dad told me you have a baby. He said, I don't have no baby. <laughs> he said, I you from your family. Please give your wife and all of my blessings. He said, I said, it was my son's mother. I'm not married anymore. And I was like, oh, okay. He said, I don't want to keep you from your family. I said, just me and my kids. <laughs> 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 so we established that up front. And uh, so I'm, I'm just really grateful for us having, I, I do believe the Lord has ordered our steps. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Beautiful. What a great story. Uh, Y'all know what? We are, uh, what's that our pastor say at, at, when they finish that? <laughs> we are out, out of time. time. But here's the thing. <laughs> Episode two is going to be next week. That'll be uh, February 21st. And it's going to be, by design, a to-be-continued session. So uh, we're going to be here every week. Uh, Marriage Investment will air every Sunday from 7 to 7.30. Uh, they will also be uploaded on um, our platforms, social media. There's a Marriage Investment Facebook page. There's a YouTube and also a website. You'll see that information view. So you can go back and look and um, look at your leisure and invite others. Uh, who wouldn't be, I mean, we've had fun. None of this was manufactured, you know. <laughs> so you can feel the love and the information from the couples. So come back next week and the Terrells and the Basies and the Scots are going to be here. So we want to say again to you, uh, happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's, happy Valentine's Day. Day. There's going to be a continued session. So we will ask you to come back next week for a continuation. So we'll hear from them again. All right. Thank you. And bye.